Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Anastasia DeFotis this morning. She's joining us here as Chief Scientific Officer, Janssen North America Pharmaceuticals, to discuss disparities in health care and some ways to improve the system and also a little bit about why innovation matters. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Doctor. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Well, a bit of your professional background and um, talk briefly about your role as Chief Scientific Officer at Janssen. Sure. I am a physician. And as the Chief Scientific Officer at Janssen, my role with my team is to set the medical and scientific engagement and support strategy for Janssen North America for all the support we provide for all of our um, medicines and vaccines. Janssen um, is the pharmaceutical companies at Johnson & Johnson. We have over 40,000 employees around the world. We focus on areas of medicine where we think, believe we can make the biggest difference and where there's the greatest unmet medical need. So we focus in areas of cardiovascular and metabolism, immune disorders, infectious diseases and vaccines, neuroscience, oncology, and pulmonary hypertension. In our role, um, I am a physician. I come from a family of physicians. Uh, I have a father, a sibling, and I have also have a daughter that's just in training right now. For all of my healthcare professional colleagues, including physicians, uh, healthcare disparity is something they've known about for quite a while, and it brings out a lot of passion because healthcare professionals are committed, as, as am I, to really providing care to make people's lives better and healthier. And that means all people. Are disparities accidental? Are certain people, certain conditions being simply overlooked? Are physicians not as versed in some of these conditions as they should be, which is causing disparities? What would you say are the major reasons that disparities okay. occur? The major reasons that we believe healthcare disparities occur really start from the most prominent being the social determinants of health, challenges in housing, um, challenges in income. Multiple of those dis are things that drive some of the largest amounts of disparities. But Neil, you raised sort of another point that I think is very important for the audience to know. And that is part of the disparities occurs in how we manage patients, right? How healthcare providers make management decisions that are often influenced uh, by race. This is especially true for patients who are black. Mm -hmm. And that also contributes. And then of course, further from that is the way we deliver healthcare in the United States or the difficulties and the increasing challenges patients have regardless of race to access care and access treatment. I think all those three things make the healthcare disparity issue much greater now than ever before. So how is Janssen working to address some of these disparities in healthcare and discuss some of the major challenges, um, some of the pushback that you possibly experience as you endeavor to uh, right this wrong? So back in 2020, Neil, we launched our Race to Health Equity platform. We actually committed $100 million over the next five years to invest and promote health equity solutions. This is where we're starting. We are extremely committed in this area. And we aspire as others to actually help eradicate the racial and social injustice, which we feel is a public health threat, by eliminating the health inequities for people of color. Additionally, the way we've approached this is we've looking at three key areas. One is healthier communities. We are actually investing in programs where we are forging um, partnerships and alliances with community organizations um, and health systems and hospitals that combat racial and social health determinants. I think that's actually one of the critical parts uh, that we have to do to make a difference. We also have been forging partnerships and alliances with organizations that combat racial and social health determinants directly. And then also as our own organization, we are very committed to having a diverse and inclusive corporate culture. And we think that that's very important that we have and ensure a diverse and inclusive workforce. So we have targeted it really three, three different ways. When it comes to affordability, affordability it runs the gamut of, of people of color, white people, everyone. How are you working to make things simply affordable? Just simply lowering the prices could be a big step. 
Um, yeah, so I think it's actually not that simple. Okay. Um, I will tell you that, in, you know, we've, we started doing a chance and transparency report uh, back in 2016 where we've been really sharing and disclosing some of that information because we want to have a transparent conversation on mm-hmm. this. And over these years, our actual um, net prices actually continue to decline. Mm-hmm. But you're right. The biggest challenge now for patients is that we have really shifted the out of, uh, out of pocket costs onto the sickest patients. So patients are feeling the pain and their families are because even though we have reduced, um, we have, re- because of rebates and discounts that we give, we actually um, provide over 54% of our list price um, to commercial payers and other parts of the healthcare system. We have actually given back more in that sense. But at the same time, because of changes in the way we do healthcare design, right, the actual burden on patients and their families has actually increased. And I agree with you, this is actually the biggest problem, the out-of-pocket cost per patient directly. What do you think that we can expect in our healthcare system with these disparities being addressed in the next five or maybe 10 years or so? Well, you know, by addressing these healthcare disparities, right, I believe that we're going to have a health, a truly healthier community, and that makes for a better society, right, as well as economy across the United States. It will be much better. Um, our people will be healthier, they will be more productive, they'll be able to engage and do things in work with their families. Um, And that's really the goal, so that we will have better overall health, right? So basically, it's uh, changing the mindset. Yes, it is. The medical community and the communities at large about how to manage health care to eliminate some of these disparities over time. Yeah, and I can give you some real examples of things we're actually doing. Please do. We've taken a multi-pronged approach because that's what's necessary because this is a complicated problem, right? So, for example, we've started a scholarship program. We've partnered with the National Medical Fellowships. And using this scholarship and mentorship program, we are helping 20 medical students of color in the U.S. who are matched and paired with a J&J mentor who serves as a resource providing advice, guidance, and insight with the goal being that we want to make sure that these medical students succeed as physicians so they can make a big difference um, in their careers. Another example would be recently, we partnered with the American College of Cardiology on an effort to increase the number of black cardiologists over the next 10 to 20 years. Um, This program identifies students as early as middle and high school, as well as college, medical school, and internal medicine residents to point them towards a career in cardiology. This program provides mentoring, access to financial support, peer support, and skills building such as interviewing. I think you need a program of this effort to really, really be able to increase the number of black cardiologists. We believe by having more diverse physicians it will that match our U.S. population, it will be bet, provide better care for patients. Another big focus area is making sure we have diversity in clinical trials. We make direct efforts to make sure that our studies populations actually match the diversity of the actual disease population. As you can see, we're really approaching it mm-hmm. from multiple different ways. Um, in order to make sure that we really start to solve the health inequity problem. Give us a website where our listeners can learn much more about Janssen and your efforts to eradicate these disparities. Yes, they can go to www.janssen.com. I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. It's been a great conversation, and I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Okay, thank you very much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Anastasia DeFotis. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.